Welcome to the Weekly Mac. Today's show is one of a kind. Just like our guest, Teresa Jimpera, she tells us about her career and her life. On the music front, Clarence Becker presents his latest album. And last but not least, guess what? Sergi Cervera's quiz about education. This is the Weekly Mac, your TV show in English, hosted by Marcella Tapor. Hello and welcome to an episode of the Weekly Mag as unique as today's date, which is the 29th of February. When we check uh, special words with Mario Serra, extraordinary facts with Matthew Tree, and an exclusive report with Nadia Gramuller. Hello all, welcome. Hi. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. Hi there. Okay, and uh, I didn't say this is a unique show lightly, because today Marius is going to teach us a very, very funny language occurrence, and one he has actually coined himself. So, Marius, <laughs> what are hotonyms? We are very interested to know and very curious. Yeah, we are going to talk about sex-related toponyms. But <laughs> I thought they would be hot toponyms, and then why not? You, you, you can call it hotonyms. For instance, uh, have you ever been traveling around, maybe driving throughout the world, and uh, found uh, extremely strange in your language toponym. Mm -hmm. It's funny as well. No? Uh, funny <laughs> or shocking. <laughs> uh, I was uh, once uh, driving through Switzerland and very near Geneva, I found this place. How would you say this? Le Coulons, I, th I thought. <laughs> Le Colon. Le Colon would be. But <laughs> for a Catalan speaker, it, it, it's a great view. I, I've never uh, thought that I would be a very good view of yeah. Le Colon. In English, it would be the bollocks. The bollocks, the bollocks would be. That, in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we, we, we'll see some of them in English as well. For instance, a place in Wisconsin called Sextonville. Mm -hmm. And you all three will have to pass an exam, wow. a little test. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared already. Well, and it seems uh, we are in for some uh, dirty jokes today, or uh, blue jokes, Matthew, uh, well, how do you call them in can, English? You can still say that, yeah, blue I, jokes. I, I'm blue in jokes. green, not right. in blue. And as Kenny Everett said once, uh, it will be done all with the best taste. The best possible taste. Kenny Everett. Well, Do you remember him? Yeah, with remember the best possible well. taste. Well, that's you a relief, say that. Marius. That's a relief. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, I think we have a few minutes uh, yeah. also to try to crack the solution to last week's guest word, right? Yeah, it wasn't very difficult, but you have um, some minutes to think about it. It was the most narrative floor of the building. It was a six letter words and most narrative floor of the building. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got uh, a few minutes to try to crack uh, that. And we are glad, like we said before, to have Nadia Gremula with us today, back with an interesting and funny report about, about something quirky. Well, you could call it that, the people's ability to collect things or their, uh, you know, what they like to collect and I was, looking to see if there's anything interesting. I mean, I did some research, for example, there was this couple who collected over 240 sex dolls while we were on sex the subject. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they would do weird things with them. They would like dress them up and take them out shopping and things like that. So I wanted to see... Jesus. <laughs> if I should find weird. people like yeah. that here. <laughs> interesting. Uh, did you go, well, what did you go to, uh, to find out about all that? Special place? Well, I went to a vintage market called Mercantic in San Cugat de oh, very nice place. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and uh, I was looking to see if I could find people uh, who collect things, and I found people like to collect all sorts of strange things, including things they don't want to collect. But mm -hmm. have a look for yourself. Okay. Are there any things that you're collecting that you don't want to collect? I have way too many compact discs with music. Stray dogs, maybe. <laughs> How many do you have? I've got two, but that's more than enough. They're completely mad. Dust. But you collect dust? <laughs> yes. I have probably hundreds of cans of paint that are halfway used. Dirty clothes <laughs> from my daughter. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You have one, one child? One child. So also not collecting children, because no, one doesn't count. Children. One, it's, uh, it's enough. <laughs> Well, children, <laughs> collecting children, that's not usual, I would say. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm also not planning to do that. <laughs> okay, but were you tempted to start a collection uh, yourself? Um, 
Well, yes, you will see, but more on that later. It will be okay. in the video. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started with a unique story, one that links Catalonia and Hollywood, and a name that is related actually to uh, Nadia's video as well, Matthew, right? Yeah, because the surname of the person concerned is uh, Cugat. Cugat. We're talking about Xavier Cugat. Mm. But he wasn't from San Cugat. He wasn't no. from San Cugat. <laughs> he was born in Girona. Yes. Uh, his, his full name, amazingly, and I, uh, this I have to check all the time, was Francesc d'Assis Xavier Cugat Mingail de Bruy de Lofeu. Um, wow. finally. Oh. Feu. Okay. Francis d'Assis, by the way, in English, is Francis of Assisi. It's the, the name of the famous the saint. Yeah. He was born in Girona. His parents moved to Cuba when he was three years old. And a few years later, he moved to the uh, United States. And the uh, amazing, the first amazing thing about him is that although he became famous for four decades of the 20th century as uh, a big band leader. He was one of the best known big band leaders, conductors uh, on the planet. But what he really wanted to be was a classical violinist. And <laughs> he, who was working in New York at the time, Pau Casals, he was not a friend of Pau Casals, which he said he was, but he wasn't. <laughs> but he had, he, he had a sort of nodding, he was on nodding terms with Pau Casals. And he somehow got to play in Carnegie Hall in New York as a classical violinist. And he traveled around a bit. He went to Rome, he went to, uh, he went to Italy, Germany, France, Catalonia, and performed as a classical violinist. But he never uh, had any success as mm -hmm. a classical violinist. Well, he was talented, though. He was extremely talented. And he was talented, uh, very yeah. good with, um, at social level, no? He was a charming person, no? He was, he was very, uh... very charming. The thing is, it's confusing, and I had to check this with the writer Jordi Punti, who's working on a novel about Xavier Cugat and knows a lot more about him than, than myself, because he said that about half of the stories that he told about his great friends, he invented he completely, <laughs> completely invented. Right. But, for example, um, he, what he did, his first thing was he, did, he loved Cuban and Caribbean music. And back in the 1920s and 30s in the United States, Cuban and Caribbean music were almost completely unknown. So Xavier Cugat decided to introduce them into the United States via Los Angeles and Hollywood. And next comes his first big story. He claims that he wrote the first soundtrack for Rudolf Valentino's famous film, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The soundtrack goes like this. Which is fine, you know, it's a little Latin and everything. The only problem is he didn't write it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. But what is incredible it is It sounds like a tango or so. That's right. And he, he in fact, later introduced... In the oh. 50s, he did a lot of tango music, oh. but not back then. We're uh -huh. talking about the, the late 1920s. Uh, he also claimed he was a friend of Rudolf Valentino, which is not true oh either. God. But the funny thing is that these stories that he invented about his life, they are still in Wikipedia, they are still in newspaper <laughs> reports about Xavier Cugat, because everybody believes them, because in fact he was such a successful man. To give you an idea, back in the 30s, when he was uh, in Los Angeles, he was getting his first orchestra together, he was organizing all that, and he did a, he was sitting in a restaurant in Los Angeles and on the wall of the restaurant, he did a caricature of Charlie Chaplin. And Charlie Chaplin liked it so much, he contacted the Los Angeles Times and the Los Angeles Times hired Xavier Cugat as a cartoonist. Oh. <laughs> and his cartoons were so popular that they were syndicated, sold, all over the United States at the same time as Xavier Cugat was introducing American dance floors to the conga, the tango, and the rumba. He's a hero. So <laughs> Absolutely. he was doing all this at the same time, <laughs> back right. in the 30s He's a multi-talented man. Yeah. Is this how he seduced his wife? Because I, uh, I read, I don't know if this is true, that he uh, had five wives. He had five wives. The, the name of one of them is not correct. Okay. <laughs> he, he lied about that. Uh, the famous one was an actress called, called Abby Lane. And um, uh, he probably met a lot of these people in the movies because as well as being a band leader and a famous cartoonist, 
uh, he also appeared in lots of films, and he appeared as a band leader, mm. um, but he was a, a character. You as know, he Xavier Cugat. As Xavier Cugat. In, With his chihuahua and everything? <laughs> With his chihuahua. <laughs> a little dark. Which was, he carried a, like he conducted with one hand and carried a little chihuahua <laughs> in his hand with the, nice um, uh, with the other. Uh, not only that, but he became so popular that this uh, fashion for Latin, well, no, let's be specific, for Cuban and Caribbean and some Latin American music, it transferred from the West Coast to the East Coast, and soon one of the most famous hotels on the East Coast, the Waldorf Astoria, wanted him to go over there and play the music there. So he started playing for Rita Hayworth, Frank Sinatra, wow. Greta Garbo yeah. in New York. So he was traveling for 30 years. He was traveling between Los Angeles and New York, uh, playing all this music with a chihuahua in, in, in one of glamorous. his hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Excellent. I, and then yeah. finally, he did come back to Catalonia, right? He came back to Catalonia, first to Barcelona. He stayed in the Ritz. Yep. Uh, apparently, he had no money left. He'd blown all his money. Um, and I remember because he used to sit in his room at the Ritz, surrounded always by beautiful women and everything. That was part of his image. But he made money by doing more caricatures and Drawing selling and drawings. Time, yeah. he, had a, he had an exhibition in Barcelona in 1972. Mm -hmm. And to, to finish it all, the most curious thing of all about him was that Woody Allen brought out a movie called Radio Days. And yeah. in Radio yeah. Days, there's an orchestra director who carries a chihuahua in oh one hand. God. And it's a homage to Xavier Cugat. But not only that, Woody Allen puts Xavier Cugat's music into a lot of his films. Well, why? Why did he do that? Because Xavier Cugat is a figure from the mid 20th century, not from Woody Allen's period. And it's because Xavier Cugat discovered Woody Allen. He, no way. He really? gave Woody Allen his first break as Ooh. a comedian. Mm. Because before Woody Allen had been a musician, that's how they met. And in the 50s, Xavier Cugat saw the comic potential of Woody Allen and gave him his first opportunity to perform as a comedian. So wow. Woody Allen's homage is to put his music in some of his films. Mm. What, what I remember from my childhood here in Barcelona, when Xavier Cugat came, uh, it, it was perceived as a very important man because apart from living at the biggest and the most expensive hotel, mm. Ritz, he d uh, drove a car with his name on the plate. That's they right. Had, there, there were no numbers on the plate. It said Xavier Cugat. And everybody thought mm -hmm. that he must be very rich. Right? Yeah, and he was just yeah. drawing. <laughs> yeah. But he was living, he was paying this expensive hotel because uh, he uh, got money from his caricatures, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's how he paid for it, mm -hmm. which were worth a fortune, by the way, by that stage. Right. How much was which he charging is... for that? Be living in the Ritz. Good question. <laughs> I, I don't have the prices. I mean, even, even if I did, they would probably be false, you know, given all the information. It would right. be like Airbnb uh, uh, plus 30. <laughs> yeah, so okay. for all right. and in the end, he's buried he, that he did go back in the very end to Girona, where he was born, and he's buried in Girona. Oh. His, his grave is in Girona. Yeah, exactly. And on his gravestone, it says something like uh, he lived. No? That's just, right. just that. He lived. He lived. He lived. He lived. And boy, did he no? live. Yeah. <laughs> Caricatures that um, uh, Matthew mentioned uh, might be something that people could collect, right, Nadia? For sure. Even in San Cugat, in Marcanti? Yes, although yeah. I didn't uh, meet anybody who collected that, but I did learn that people like to collect all sorts of things. And I also learned that there are bigger, bigger collections and smaller collections. Uh, when uh, can we actually start to call um, uh, some items, a few items, a collection? Two, I would, three, is that enough? No. I would say that's a subjective uh, way of looking at things, but have a look for yourself in the video. Today's topic is about collecting. Elizabeth Taylor famously collected ex-husbands, so I'm very curious to find out what Catalan people like to collect. Are you a collector? Do you like to collect things? In this collection we have uh, more or less 150,000 books. In my first second life I, I was having a lot of things. 
Mm -hmm. But now I think that I'm collecting possibility to see the life in another way. I do like collecting the, the older items, so I feel younger, yes. <laughs> I collect all the useless antiques, like children's toys. People who collect old toys, you know, old dolls with missing eyes and things like that. That's I find that really weird. And so I have hundreds. You just imagine you'd find yes, dead babies somewhere. It was all very strange. I started collecting globes like uh, Mapamundi. I started by one and then two and then three and then I realized it took a lot of space on the shell. So I stopped. You so stopped at two? I stopped at three. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure if we can call this In a collection. In my mind, it was the beginning of a collection. <laughs> restoring my furniture I found some notes and things and I think those are those I really like and I keep them so I guess I collect those I found love letters and small things like that but I love sneakers so I buy whenever I have money I spend it on sneakers what is like the craziest thing that somebody has asked you for the lock on the door <laughs> Really? Yeah. They wanted to have your lock? Yeah. They're like, oh, that's nice. And I'm like, please don't ask me the price of that because that's so not for sale. So that's. So uh, you didn't sell it? No. I would have just said that's a thousand euros or something. No, because then you, yeah, yeah, probably that's why I'm never going to be rich. <laughs> Michael collects old newspapers. He has a whole room in one of his houses. Well, I don't like to read them when they're new because then, you know, they're, <laughs> they're not, not so news. interesting. They're more interesting when they're old. So you like old news? Exactly. Old news is good. I, I prefer old news because then you know what's important and what's not important. My father-in-law won a prize for collecting the local magazine called Tot San Cugat. It's free. Did he collect all of them? Like, yeah, since he was young and I thought, why do that? But hey. Is your father-in-law Catalan? Yes. Well, I heard Catalan's like three, three things, so... There you go. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more about that. <laughs> so it's been proven. <laughs> Personally, the only thing I've ever collected, unwillingly though, is ex-boyfriends. But the one thing I would actually really like to collect is tarot decks, because I think it would be useful, because at least I'd be able to tell the future. I'm a witch. Crystal balls. Maybe I should collect crystal balls. Hmm. Uh, crystal balls, tarot <laughs> decks. Yes. Yeah, all for the future. <laughs> okay, interesting. You and want? that uh, American man who said he only collects old news because they are more interesting. I thought that was strange. I mean, I don't like to listen to the news when they're new, so not even even less so when they're old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. and how old? You know, I mean, like he didn't say. It's a yeah. paradox when a new is old. Yeah, you know? exactly. Mm. It's That's true. why we've been an artistic way of looking at it. But what about you guys? Is there anything you like to collect? Umbrellas. Really? Yeah, because <laughs> I, lo I lose them all, all the time, so I collect them and I insist on collecting. How many have you got? Well, I've got hundreds of them, but uh, I don't keep. <laughs> You've got I hundreds them. of them everywhere, no? Everywhere. And you don't world. know where they are. I disseminate some, it's some just other an people. Open collection. <laughs> an open collection. <laughs> it's an open collection, right? Yeah. It's good. I collect the complete works of three writers, especially the Catalan writer Kim Munzo mm -hmm. and two American writers, William Burroughs and Henry Miller. And Henry Miller, I have about 60 books. I have. Um, uh, handwritten, wow. well, I have some handwritten examples of postcards that he wrote. I have almost everything. And from the others, too, I have signed copies and all kinds of Just originals things. or translate, uh, translations some as well? Translations some translations as well, especially, for example, Henry Miller and William Burroughs into Catalan, into Catalan. Have, which are very difficult to find. Yeah. You would have loved the, the bookshop then. Yeah. Yes, because he had, what was it, 150,000? Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. That's it's good. it's a very nice place. Yeah. And also, I mean, he was, it was, it was not in the video, but he was saying that at night, the, I think that was the most interesting thing about the place. He said, at night, the books, they talk to each other. <laughs> and some of the authors fight with each other. So <laughs> what about your books? Do they also have conversations? No, but authors do fight with each other. That's <laughs> fine. Not talk, but fine. Okay. Oh. okay. All right. Uh, well, there are some people who collect, who like to uh, to collect, uh, you know, champagne caps. Yeah. That's quite yeah. Uh, common. Yeah. And uh, I want to ask uh, Marius if he knows the name for this kind of collection. Oh, no. It, well, it must have an, a specific name. I just name. discovered it? it and it's very interesting. It's it? called 
Plecomusophilia. Wow. You no, know, it comes from French. From plaque. Uh, plaque. Uh, uh, then it's uh, muselet. Muselet is the wire, you know, uh -huh. that that holds the the, the sparkling wine not to um, uh, into into place. Yeah. Right. So it's from it plaque well. and muselet, and it was discovered. The muselet was discovered by this French guy Adolphe Jacquerot in 1844. Wow. So if you wow. didn't know this word, placo-musophilia. Oh, placo-musophilia. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I know other philias, but... Uh, <laughs> not this one. usually like the, you know, disorders, no? <laughs> <laughs> like psychological disorders, anything that has philia in the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, yeah. Uh, it's like a good thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, philias and phobias, but uh, there are lots of them. Sometimes they, they have special, specific names because of collectors hmm. or or people liking, uh, uh, and they invent words mm. all the time, as mm. we do. Okay, yes, like, like hot right. Names. Like hot <laughs> names, for instance, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, Nadia, you have something else for us? Some, uh, anything else you, you collected in, uh, maybe in San Cugat? Yes, I couldn't find any crystal balls or tarot decks, so I collected greetings. Oh, oh, oh. greetings, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll take that. Oh. <laughs> We don't, we don't like it's all that French. <laughs> okay. Normal handshake. <laughs> that was strong. <laughs> Jesus. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Nice to meet you. Super basic. Oh my God! So you kids of today, let me show you how this is done. This is how cool people do it. Thumb, two fingers, and now. Snap. That's it? That's it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that. <laughs> Where does that last one come from? <laughs> this one? No, the, sorry, the, the one long before. one. The, one the more complicated with, one. With the sun quite, quite the... complex. Well, this is like, if, you know, when we were younger, we, we, we have to have these cool greetings. So we, we, yeah, we had really? these cool oh. greetings. Kids these days, everything's. Simple. I mean, he was just like this. I'm like, come on, it's not very creative. It's a high five <laughs> and a fist bump. Is yeah. the normal. Okay, anyone, yeah. that's a nice collection. And the good thing about it also is that it doesn't take uh, up too much uh, room, right? That's true, yeah. Okay, now we'll continue with Mario Serra and his hilarious hotonyms, but that will be right after a short video. Did you know that a hat is something more than an accessory you wear on your head? Well, pay close attention to JG's language tip. Hi, whenever I give you English language tips, I'm wearing my teacher's hat. But wait, you're probably thinking, he isn't wearing a hat. In this context, hat refers to a role or an occupation. And if you have various different occupations or different roles, you can be wearing different hats at different times. For example, if I'm studying Catalan, I'm wearing my student's hat. And we're wearing my student's hat, I would say, Oh my God, homework is really boring sometimes. But then I'll change to my teacher's hat and I'll say, but it is really necessary. So if you've got different professions or occupations, do keep in mind which hat you're wearing. Actress, model, modeling agency. She has so many things to tell that we had to invite her again. Stay tuned for our chat with Teresa Gimpera. Okay, Marius, and after you blew us away <laughs> with the name of that uh, Swiss uh, village, which I dare not repeat, Nicolau, it's, Nicolau. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for you to expand this hot names thing. Yeah, from hat to hot, right? Um, for instance, the same that I felt in Switzerland, an American traveler would uh, ex experience in Peniscola. The, okay. he, he came into Peniscola and he, he's got a big penis uh, in front of a cola, maybe he thinks it's a soft drink, Pepsi cola, penis cola, or maybe he, <laughs> if he knows some Spanish, it's uh, worse because cola can mean the same than penis or even bottom. So uh, I've prepared three tests for you all uh, okay. in order to test your imagination. The first one, I will give you four hotonyms. And you have to 
fine, which is the fake one. There is only one that it's not real. Okay. The other three are real. I say, first, Pina Stone. Second, Dick Town. <laughs> Third, Cockburn. And fourth, Prick Town. Sorry? Prick Town. Prick Town. Prick Town. I would say. He's What's making efforts one? not to laugh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. What's the first one again? A, Pina Stone, B, Dick Town, C, Cockburn, D, Prick Town. What do you say, Nadia? Dick Town is, is the fake one. Dick Town? So you say B is a fake? Yeah. What about you? No idea, but I don't know, four? The four Prick Town is fake. Do I you? agree with Marcella, Prick Town is fake. Oh, you are right. You okay. both of you are right because because we are uh, experts in uh, Pennstone <laughs> is in South Yorkshire. In England, it has 23,000 inhabitants. It's a, a big city. Dick Town is an abandoned city, but I'm not surprised. It's a good name county. <laughs> with this name, it was named after a richer, so Dick. Richard Town, Dick Town, right? Okay. And Cockburn is in South Australia, so mm. the only fake one was, as you both uh, uh, just uh, knew, Prick Town. Right. Now, because Prick isn't a name. Oh. Like, like Richard or. But you yeah. could prick yourself. Yeah. You don't always have to think of genitals. Yeah, but you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nadia, for that. <laughs> but uh, if I may say so, like, why would you name a town after pricking yourself? I don't know. Why yeah. not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, okay. Everything okay. is possible. The okay. second test, let, let's see, you are 1-1-0 one, one, by now. Secondly, all of these four homonyms that I would say now, all four do exist. But my question is, which one do you think is the most frequent one? Right? Okay. A, pussy. I'm sorry? Pussy. <laughs> That's P-U-S-S-Y. That's it. Okay. Okay. Second, condom. Mm -hmm. Third, dildo. <laughs> and fourth, climax. What do you think? Pussy, <laughs> condom, dildo, or climax? Which is the most frequent one? What would you say, Nadia? Why do I have to start? Uh, please let's start. Okay. 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 We'll start with you, Mike. I would say the most frequent one is condom. Condom, you would mm -hmm. say. Okay. What about you, Marcello? I agree with Matthew. Condom? <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to do. I want it. Can I agree as well? Yeah. Okay, you, fine. Is that to avoid saying all the other names? So, <laughs> oh, you are wrong. Because, oh. because uh, the most frequent one is Climax. There, there are at least seven places called Climax in Georgia, Michigan, Colorado, two in North Carolina, in New York, and even in Saskatchewan, in Canada. Three. <laughs> Lots of Climax. You, you, you had to know that. And then there are two pussies. One in Ronald, and the second one, not with Y, but with I, mm -hmm. P U double S I, in Estonia. That doesn't count then. Well, it doesn't count. <laughs> in, in Estonian, it means the gun. <laughs> Pussy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And condom is in France, but there's yeah, only there's one. There's only one. Okay. You knew that. <laughs> you knew I didn't know the, the French only one. one. Okay. Yeah. And Dildo is in Newfoundland, in fact. No satisfier, still. No. I haven't not found yet. any no. satisfaction. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> okay, and the third, <laughs> our third test for homonyms would be, uh, I would say, four uh, really <laughs> splendid homonyms, and splendid. there is only one existing. <laughs> so splendid. there are three fake. You, you, you have to uh, guess which is the real one. The real okay. one, okay. First one, 69. Second one, porno. Third one, threesome. We are four, but we, we could manage that. And fourth one, MILF. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, the first MILF. one? M-I-L-F. M -I -L -F. Sorry for oh, my MILF. pronunciation. MILF. MILF. Yeah. MILF. Okay. That's MILF. It. okay. MILF is the correct one. MILF is the correct one? Yeah, I agree with that. I think so too. In Germany or any place? Or... Okay, and what about you, Matilda? Uh, yeah. Don't agree, don't agree, don't agree. Yeah, I must agree. You must agree? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, you are still wrong again. Oh, oh, all of you. No. The only real place here is porno, which is in Nigeria. In fact, you, can, you could travel there, and well, you, if you go to a cinema in porno, everything, uh, all the cinemas are porno. You know what I mean? 
I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, doing a bit of a Xavier Cougat there, if I might say you so. You know, you've, you've, you missed out the best place, though. Which is the best one? In Austria, there's a town called Fucking. Fucking all well, the time. Well, actually, oh. it's pronounced fucking, but it's spelled fucking. <laughs> you can say yes. that. Okay, yes. okay we, we can go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and anytime. Anytime. In, in England, there's, there's uh, a town called Bellend, which is the, the glands of the penis, or the Bellend. Ah. And there's also a little street <laughs> called Fanny Close, which can also mean, <laughs> could mean perfectly well the little street of Miss Fanny, because Fanny is also a, a, a woman's name or a girl's name. Yeah. Or it could also mean there is a vagina in the immediate proximity. It's like <laughs> one or the other. So. Okay, my contribution to hotter names. Oh, yeah, um, yeah uh, if you want one. Actually, it's actually not a hotter name. It's quite, uh, it's quite mild. It's Brest in France. Oh, Brest! Yeah, you know? But I, I um, know Brest, but they have never associated Because I speak associated French, to... I've never associated it with uh, like a hotter name, but... Uh... But today? <laughs> today <laughs> yeah. today is the day. Brest? Yeah. Why not? Brest. Okay, well, after this uh, very interesting uh, <laughs> quiz, uh, very enlightening, uh, Marius, mm. uh, it's time to reveal the solution to this week's uh, guest word enigma. The most narrative floor of the building, it was six letters, but in British English, but any idea about which was the most narrative floor of a building? A story. A story. story. That is because it's a nomophone between story, five letters, and mm. story with E. But in American English, they, they are both uh, written with only five letters. The E is missing. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. uh, funny. Okay. okay. That was an easy one. Easy one. And let's finish uh, words and facts with the clue for this week's uh, guess word. I think it's rather easy as well. Let's do it. You wear them to see better and you raise them to say cheers. Seven letters. You wear them to see better and you raise them to say cheers. Seven letters. You wear them to see better and you raise them to say cheers. Seven letters. You can crack the guess word and post the solution on our social media profiles. And why don't you challenge your friends as well? That could be fun. Well, uh, Matthew, Marius and Nadia, thank you so much. It's been fun today. Okay. Until okay. next time. And we'll take a short break, but don't go too far because next we'll interview Teresa Gimpera, probably one of the people who knows more stories about the jet set and artists in Barcelona. Welcome back. Today's guest is someone with many stories to tell. Stories about the Catalan society, the 60s, the 70s, cinema, modeling and much more. But first we invite you to pay attention to the glossary which will be highlighted in the subtitles and will help you understand the interview better. Our guest today, Teresa Gimpera, sees herself as a versatile person. If you refer to someone as versatile, you approve of them because they have many different skills. She was a blonde in a society full of brunettes and that made her look quite exotic. A brunette is a woman or girl with dark brown hair. She was a very busy actress and she also took the modeling career. Modeling is the practice or occupation of a person who models clothes. And we finish this glossary with a phrasal verb, to come out. If a fact comes out, it becomes known to people, so it's made public. Not for nothing, she defines herself as a versatile and multitask person. She's a well-known Catalan actress and former model, Gorge Devine's muse, and now an active great-grandmother. We had her with us on the first season of the Weekly Mag, but she left us wanting more. Teresa <laughs> Gimpera, welcome. Hello, welcome. We I'm are, very happy to be yeah. here. <laughs> All right, well, um, you are here, Teresa, because we want to ask you about an exhibition you attended uh, a month ago, more or less, at yeah. Palau Robert. It's, uh, it was an exhibition, it is an exhibition about Boccaccio, yes. the famous dance hall <laughs> and social club in the Barcelona of the 60s. And we would like you uh, to tell us what was your relationship with uh, Boccaccio back then. You know, in those days, all, all my group, uh, no, we, we in Boccaccio, we create a big group. Big group, uh, intellectuals, actors, directors, cinema, all kind of people. But uh, the other day they said, uh, Boccaccio is more university. You know, it's the only place I have been there at night alone, 
because you know always you'll find some friend. And there, the, the big, uh, we create Oriol Regas, Xavier Miserax, who made the photo typical of my image of Boccaccio, and me. The okay. first money we put in Boccaccio. Mm -hmm. Because right. we want to create something to have friends. Who, and the, the good thing is, uh, after years and years and years, when we see each other, all the friends, it's like we, we never uh, been separate. Mm -hmm. We were doing trips, we were always finding places, and we were very young all, you know, because everybody was anti-Franco. Uh -huh. That was sure. Yes. And we want to change the world, because the problem was the, 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 the young people, they don't realize, like me, like a woman, it uh, was impossible in those days, for example, to sign a, a, a bank account if I didn't have the signature of my husband. That was terrible. My first son was born in a hospital, was decided to give this, the name of my husband. And all this group, we tried to change little by little, mm -hmm. and we discovered the uh, we discovered you can have sex without having children, <laughs> because you know in those days is uh, always they're saying the, the grandmother saying, oh you'll have children, the, but los que Dios quiera, no. Okay, well, and you already had three children. You yeah. had actually children when you were very young. Yeah. 20, 21? 20, 21 I had the first, and 18 months I had the second, and 15 months I had the third. Okay, so when uh, you had three uh, three boys in four years. Three boys. Is that correct? Si, si, well, si, si. And, and the only, and I was so young, but the only thing I remember is <laughs> I will never sleep again one night. Oh, because to, to sleep, you know, it became a big problem because three children, so, so together, the age, mm -hmm. one was thirsty, the other is green. Uh, yeah. And now I am very happy because from these three children, I have uh, four great grandchildren, four grandchildren, mm -hmm. and I have a big family. Yes, and uh, you dedicate a lot of time to them. Uh, as I know, uh, right? You're a dedicated uh, grandmother and great grandmother. Mm, I right? never have been a, a typical mother for the work, you know, because uh, when I had the, when I had only two children, I remember my husband was travel was working in Seji uh, Barral, and one day I went to meet him, and when they had the department of publicity, and they said, "Oh, your wife will be good for a photo because we need the photo for calendar." You are not a typical beauty here in Barcelona because no. you are blonde, surrounded by brunette girls, right? Yeah, yeah, and all the mothers in those days were foreigners. They're no because the, this profession of modeling was a real bad, you know, they think we are. It all, had a bad reputation. Bad reputation. So when I was little, all my family were saying, "You always look very good in the photos." You know, because it's photogenia. Yes. The photogenia you have or you don't have. It, it's, you can be very, very beautiful and not... Photogenic. Not, not photogenic. So I did that photo. They like it. They publish it. And from there, that, from that photo, became the work. Okay, but actually it was a beer advertisement, right? Si, a, a, a beer. beer yeah? a, a beer from the north of Spain. Uh, it was a commercial for a... Si, a brand calendar. Of, for, yes. So, so no. beer for, for and, beer. and from that photo became the big... Uh, people that was discovered the start me. of your career. Yeah. And then you went into film. You made 120 films. That's a lot. Excuse me, 155. 155! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> That's a record. Yeah. yeah, and because I appear so much in TV, so much, the, the people of cinema, they start saying, this book, because I was known from La Chica de la Tele. Mm. And the children, when they were little, said, Mommy, Mommy, they know you, they know you. <laughs> they were suffering because, but they didn't know my name. And suddenly the people of cinema, they start having interest. But mm -hmm. all the offers I didn't like until, until it was an offer. 
which is, was written for me, the film, and good director, and mm -hmm. so it's for that I started with the films. An important moment in your life was when you met your second husband, a very famous and handsome American actor, Craig Hill. Yes. How did you meet, and uh, how was your relationship? You with know, you? When, when I did 155 films, and I always say, it's very difficult to be in love with some actor because you work, but it's an actor. But with Craig, I, I did that film as a co-production with Italy and the United States. We shoot in Lago di Garda, in Trieste, in Verona, and in Vienna. Wow. And I was doing that film, I thought, oh my God, working with an American would be so stupid. Oh. And suddenly he was opposite. Respect, professional, and we became in love. And uh, for me, it's uh, when we finished the film, because I went to Carlo Vivari for a film festival, and he, I was not working anymore in the film, and I went to Vienna to meet him. Mm -hmm. And the goodbye in the airport, me going to Barcelona and he going to California, that my heart. Oh. Your heart broken. My God. And and. So what did you do? My English was not good in those days. I mean, I couldn't, I, I knew a little English and he didn't know Spanish and it was very difficult to, to communicate. Mm -hmm. And I decided, I invent, uh, do collage with papers. I was uh, putting like a photo with you. Smiling. So, come upside down, <laughs> without you. A smiley face and a sad face. And, and right? things I know in English, I know what it means. And so he received three. And after the third said, I am going to, to Europe. And oh. he came to here. And from okay. there, yeah. And, you, and how long, uh, for how long have uh, you been together? We met the sixth of the month six of the year 66. Oh, and, and we married. easy to remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we married in 1990. He, 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 never, he never was married. And for me, I didn't care, no. Okay, and then you didn't have any children, no, right? No. But you had a wonderful life uh, together. Actually, here in Barcelona, um, you were a very famous couple, mm -hmm. both very good looking, mm -hmm. very handsome, and yeah. attractive. Yeah. You're a kind of a Brangelina couple at that time. When, <laughs> when you entered a room, everybody was uh, looking at you both. Yeah, I have a friend, Colita, the photographer, she has a very good sense of humor. It was so funny because one day he said, when Craig and Teresa arrive in a restaurant, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but and it's the same for you. You had the same effect on people as well. Yes, but but I never have been conscious about this. It's mm -hmm. incredible. Mm -hmm. Now, when I see photos of those days, really I realize I was beautiful, photogenic, and yes. But uh, when you are when you are working, I never have been that sense of. I thought for me it was normal. How did it feel at the time to be an inspiration and a muse for the Gauche Divine? Uh, because I was more in that group, you know, just uh, it was, I was always with them and Miserax and Regas and, and all these people and they decide, I, I, I didn't decide, the photo, the, this typical photo. Actually, there are some really nice photos of yourself in this Boccaccio exhibition at the Palau Robert, which, by the way, will will be running until the until April, the yeah, 12th, I yeah. think. And um, we have the book here, and there is a special chapter dedicated to you. Yeah. Uh, the book is by Tony Vall, and like I said, there are really nice photographs and documents about and, Boccaccio. And, and the, the important time. thing of this book, I, I told the, the, the Vall, it's fantastic because it was a guy he was six years old when we closed Boccaccio. And he had the interest of finding things, gadgets of Boccaccio. And mm -hmm. the other day was very interesting, you know, because from all that group we start Boccaccio, now we are the few ones who are left, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Teresa, what about your life at the moment? Uh, how is your daily life at the moment? You're still, you're a very active woman. Ooh. You've always been, yes. right? Yes, yes. Uh, what about now? Me, you know, the, the good thing is I have a big family, but my family, one lives in a lot, the other in Alella, the, you know, it's not... I never have been a, a typical mother for the work. I am not a typical grandmother. 
grandmother, yes. I took them to the Euro Disney, I took them to California. But now we see each other often. Mm -hmm. But uh, and after the important thing is to have a lot of friends. You have, I have a lot of friends of all kind of different styles and and dinners and lunches and concerts and mm -hmm. so my life is full right now. And the important is to have not only your myself life is full, is to have what tomorrow I have to do. You know, to I always, have projects. I have my I don't have an agenda anymore, but in the in the kitchen I have a calendar. Fantastic calendar every day you write what you have to do. It's not black, but uh, three quarters black already. So that means I have things to do almost every week. Mm -hmm. Today it's here, yes. tomorrow there. So, and until I can, I will do that, that life. You know, just uh, when I cannot uh, carry anymore with my little bones. <laughs> <laughs> but you're in I will good stop. health, right? And you are uh, active. What's the secret of this uh, energy, of good no, energy? That I you think have? this is mental. Mental. Mm -hmm. Mental and genetic, or, or my physical genetic, because I am very similar to my father. And, uh, and I think life is mental. If you want to see the. I, I try all the, the big dramas, mm -hmm. because I lost a son. That is a big, big, big. Yeah, big, that big, was a tragic big, uh, big, moment big, in big, your life. Big problem, no. Big problem which I hid for 11 years to avoid press who's going to be into that and start talking because drugs are terrible, terrible, terrible. And, uh, and we try, 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 try until arrives the... the but eggs. then you uh, came out publicly and, and talked about his uh, oh, illness. Oh yeah, we wrote, we wrote in the newspaper when he died why he, di he died from the drugs and the AIDS. Mm -hmm. and below we put and he uh, he fight for that it was uh, i knew it was going to happen and after that it's necessary to when people will say no poor i'm so sorry you must suffer and i always say i am not suffering he is suffering anyway i think it was a very good thing that you came out publicly and talked about his illness and and also you gave advice to people who are in the same uh, situation oh, yeah mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, along with the modeling, uh, Teresa, you are also uh, known and best known as a cinema actress in the first place. <laughs> this is something we'd like to get into, but first, another short language tip. Fewer and less are words that are always confused by many people, not only English students, but also native speakers, including myself. Less is the comparative of little, so we use it with uncountable nouns. For example, there is less milk. But many people use less when we shouldn't use it. We use fewer with countable nouns. For example, fewer people were at the party, or there were fewer students than last year. So remember, if you can count them, go for fewer. Thank you. And we continue our chat with Teresa Ginfera, but first let me introduce you to Miquel Lopez from Televisión de Badalona. We've had him as a contestant in our quiz and he impressed us with his knowledge about cinema and Western. So who better to join our chat, Miquel? Hi, how are Hi. you? Welcome back. Thank you. Um, uh, Hello. How are you, Miss Gibera? Okay. Mrs. Gibera or oh, Teresa? Teresa. Teresa, of course. Te Teresa. Teresa. I, I like, uh, uh, like my husband was telling me, not Teresa, it's not uh -huh. Teresa, Teresa in Italiano. Teresa. Okay. Teresa. And, and your surname is, uh, we can say it in English, Gimpera also. Ah, Gimpera, with, yes. With the gym, you know. Yes. In German, it's Gimpera. Ah, no. Gimpera. That's okay. Well, you were so famous. We talk about uh, your, your career mm. as a model and publicity girl that in your first role, I think in Fata Morgana, yes. directed by Vicente Aranda, your character was named Jim. Yes. If I don't remember badly. Yeah. A diminutive of, of Jim Pera. And you were uh, 
very famous in those days. Uh, that movie, uh, Fata Morgana, was a swinging, even crazy sci-fi story, isn't it? Um, how was the first experience <laughs> with cinema? Right now, after how many years? I don't understand that film. Uh, <laughs> even now? Because the idea is Gonzalo Suarez. I was, I was um, uh, doing a, a fashion in the Ritz, mm -hmm. and Gonzalo Suarez was waiting in the exit, and he said, because I was so, I would appear in TV and every, every, my image, and uh, he wanted to write a book with uh, photos of me. Mm -hmm. And he had an idea of a film, seriously. And the money was Vicente Aranda. So Vicente Aranda directed and he wrote the, the script, que es Fata Morgana. Mm -hmm. Fata Morgana is a city, well, it's a very complicated film, but uh, was done because I, I was appear so much in, in gym, you know, I don't like any man, I don't love any man. It's a, it's a very special film. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I asked how much it cost in the third week to leave mm -hmm. because I was so, in, I am not an actress, I, I, okay. and I, I was feeling terrible. And I said, how much will it cost to live? And they told me the money, so I just said to, to finish. I am not an actress, you say, but you have done 150 something 55. movies. 55. 55 wow. movies, that's yes. incredible. The, your second, by the way, was Black Box Affair, I think. No, the second was Una Historia de Amor, de Jordi Grau. Okay. Que I like to do because that film, I was not sophisticated. I was pregnant without makeup and it was a very black and white and very intellectual and after that I start doing a co-production with Paris and then after is the black box affair. So your fourth? Was Il Mondo Trema. Il Mondo mm -hmm. Trema, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, filming in Garda Lake, isn't it? We, we, we start in Lago di Garda, in Verona, Trieste y Vienna. And your co-star was a man called Craig Hill, Craig Hill, isn't yeah. it? And you talk um, about him, but uh, then you, you met him, you married later, and you were a couple for years. Uh, in, those, uh, in those years, Craig was a star already, was a star in America, and he started playing uh, spaghetti westerns, or yes. paella westerns, you yes. know? Uh, that was his uh, best stage as, a, as an actor, perhaps, that, that era? I think Craig, uh... He could follow his career in Hollywood much better than here. But love is love, so I think he preferred that than to go back to, to America. Mm -hmm. for, me, for me, Craig was a person who respected me 100%, respect my sons, because it's very easy to be in love with somebody. But I always say maybe a, a, a Catalan never will, will do that. To, carry me and three children. And he did that because the, the, the third was in Rome for two years because we were living between Rome and Barcelona. And uh, he take care of everything and respect, you know, respect and love and you know, that's all. But I never compare anything. I mean, uh, and, and you know, the, 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 the men I like, Orson Welles when I was young. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with the beauty of Craig. I never, I never was attracted for beauties. Well, anyway, uh, no doubt. I, I'm sure, Mikael, you have more, more questions, but we need to, uh, to continue because no doubt we could go on and on about cinema with uh, Teresa Gimpera and with uh, Mikael Lopez. We could go on for hours and hours, but we need to take a break now. But we'll be right back in a moment, so stay tuned. Get the and me on a sweet holiday. Him. If you don't, here's your chance because he's back with a new album, Changes. In a moment, Clarence Becker on the Weekly Max. Welcome back to our chat with Teresa Gimpera, with whom we are talking about life and work, and particularly about cinema, also with our collaborator, Miguel Lopez. Okay, though, to sum up a bit, you've been, we said, in 155 movies. I would like to know if you have a favorite a film or character. I have the privilege to say I, I did the film, which is in a book, said the, a film you should see before you die. It's El Espíritu de la Colmena. 
This, thanks to the director, saw my other part of me because I always, they see me elegant. Uh, and there I was doing a post, post-war uh, woman. You never know exactly what he's doing, mysterious. And the protagonists of these films are, are the two, two girls. Mm -hmm. But it's the best film I, I ever did. You like Orson Welles. Did you like, for example, Alfred Hitchcock? Alfred, oh yeah, Alfred That's Hitchcock. a good question. You know, Alfred, he had arrived to me. Hmm. Really? He's very, very short. Okay, I didn't well, know. I thought he was no, a, no, no, a big man. He's short. Right. He was short. When I well, did that test in, in, in Hollywood. Exactly, was, yeah. Was so Tell us about it. <laughs> it's just, but it's a little long because uh, one day, uh, Universal Studios trying to find me in Spain because I did an interview in Madrid with a beauty uh, appears in the, some papers in America, just a line in black and white and my hair didn't look blonde. And uh, Spanish actress, Teresa Gimpera, uh, she's so beautiful, uh, stupid thing. Okay. So he saw that, Hitchcock, and said, look for her, <laughs> like was easy. He went to do for which film? Uh, uh, Topaz, Topaz. Topaz, okay. But my role was to, supposed to be uh, Puerto Rican. Oh, right. And uh, they, he, when I arrived, they, he said, make me olive color and black hair. Mm. But if you do that to me, my blonde appears. No, no, I don't have dark eyes and, and also my accent. If mm. I speak English, I don't have a South American accent. So I went because he forced and forced and forced. So I went there and I had the privilege to say I did a test for Hitchcock. Okay, but right, it was amazing. almost, almost <laughs> a play in Universal. Mm. Okay. Um, and I would like to ask you, Teresa, what is the, the thing that uh, makes you proudest of everything uh, you lived in your life, professionally or personally? and the happiest moment of your life? I am proud I learned how to cook. Oh, Because I learned good. too late, <laughs> I had no time. <laughs> and the first day I went to the kitchen, my children said, Mar está la cuina, la mar está... <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> and, and that, I, I like to cook. For me, it's, I like everything to do with the hands, you know, I like to do. To, Sewing and knit, knitting, no? Knitting, sewing, everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, happiness. Happiness, I think the best happiness I have is when I wake up in the morning and, and, and I'm still alive and I have projects. And I think the older you get, the more patient you are. Before I didn't have patience and now I have more patience. And if, if I need to cry, I cry but in private, but happiness, laugh, oh, I love to laugh. It's for that I have so many wrinkles. I have wrinkles <laughs> Always of optimistic, right? Yeah. Okay, well, we only have uh, time left for the question chain, which is a question uh, for you, Teresa, like I uh, told you before, we have a surprise. So we have a question for you from our last uh, guest, and in this case, we had another actress whom you may know, and her name is Mariona Rivas. Hello, my name is Mariana Rivas. I work as an actress. And I'd like to know if you ever use some acting tips to obtain something that you needed to want it in your life. Oh, I think, I think, because I never learned to be an actress. It's, it's a spontaneous. It's, I, think, I think for any work to, you do in life, you must have first a little culture, second intelligence, and after, to the director who directs you to believe on you, and that's all. It's a, be natural, be, don't try to be star. I hate that. I hate the, 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 the actors, rock, the actors, everything there, oh, the best in the world. No, no, hmm. you are doing, that is a job. It's only the job. A good actors, bad actors, but... Uh, so you never uh, got any training in, in mm -hmm. acting? For example, in movies, uh, I'm just curious, uh, if you had to cry in a film? Oh, it's easy. Yeah? How do you do that? <sighs> no, now I will not do because it's, you need to... <laughs> and after I have a, a system, 
it's a you know una, one thing from you, when you have a cold is a, a men menthol yes okay they just put a little menthol here mm -hmm. and you put mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay right <laughs> yes <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely <laughs> That's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and laughing is easier, right? No mental needed. No, I did. But one day I did to an actor. <laughs> in, in, I did a film with Gonzalo Suarez, A Home, it was a fantastic film. And it was a, a guy in a, in a series to cry. He was playing violin and he didn't cry because he had some problem in the obstruction here. And I didn't know. And I want to be... I know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and at night came to the hotel with the guys. <laughs> Never again I will try to do it. <laughs> okay, and uh, one last question for you, Teresa. How do you see uh, the situation in Catalan uh, cinema and film at the moment? I think... I don't know how to, to explain because all the directors, all the new young people, or not that young, they want to do always the best film, the best film, the best film. But it's so complicated to do a film. It's very complicated because it costs a lot of money. And uh, I think they're producing too many films without, without quality, let's mm. say. Mm -hmm. And this is, I am sorry, no? Because it should be a... But I understand an artist want to do his product and to show his product, thinking is the best. And the other also, the other also. There are so many. In the end, there is no money for so many people. And also cinema, I like to go to cinema. It's a big difference between seeing a film in a TV or in a big screen and the sound, and oh, I love that. But you go to, I have been in the cinema sometimes, three people only in the, in the I am afraid because there is a film of a lady, they walk from the back. And I remember <laughs> when I am alone, I look exactly who is in back. <laughs> No, but I, I, I like films, but I think it's a, a, a overbooking of production right now. Too much. Mm -hmm. Teresa, thank you so much for coming. Today has been an honor and a pleasure, oh, as yeah, usual. Thank you. thank you so much, Teresa, and thank you so much, Mikel. Until next time. So, are you keen on video games? Cassandra Ko is a Malaysian writer who works in the computer gaming industry and we interviewed her during her visit to the CCSB for the gameplay exhibition which deals with the origins, uh, the language of video games and the huge impact they've had on our culture. So let's see what she says about that. I've always been a big reader, up to the point where I have this memory of my mother giving me a hundred ringgit and telling me, here, buy as many books as you want and don't disturb me after that. I bought an enormous stack of books and I finished them in a week and a half and went back to my mother and said, could I have more money for books? And my mother actually said, you are banned from buying more books for a while, good grief. Horror is possibly my greatest fascination in terms of creating things. Horror explores one of the most basic human emotions, which is fear, and it studies it, both in terms of what fear drives us to do, how it pushes us sometimes towards hatred or towards expressing bigotry, because we don't understand the other. But horror is interesting as well, because the flip side of fear is hope. Fear is what led us to create walls against the dark. It's what told us communities were important because with communities, we are stronger and less afraid. And horror straddles that boundary. Video game writing and linear fiction is intensely different. To begin with, when you're writing a book, it is an almost entirely solitary process. Your ego can kind of get in the way in some degrees um, because you're always in control because you have to be in control. And going into video games was a little bit of a culture shock in some ways because video games is a collaborative event. 
it's not only a case of having multiple writers on the same project, it is also a work that exists in communication with the artists, with the level designers, with the programmers, with the voice designers. And it's been humbling to see how my work connects with those people, how my work, if it's imperfect, impedes other people and the ecosystem that arises from it. Every piece of media is in many ways a conversation between the artist and the audience. With film, for example, you are agreeing with the creators that you will bear witness to the art that is created. With books, you are committing to multiple hours of not only reading, but conjuring the stimuli that comes with the taste, the sights, the sounds, the smells of the book. And video games have a new trick to them, a new interesting way of communicating. Our brains um, do not fundamentally know the difference between fiction and truth. It relies on a lot of stimuli, a lot of previous experiential um, memories. And that is how we distinguish between reality and otherwise. But what video games does is it uses interactivity to make us forget that we are separate. Because when it tells you, all right, you can hide under a bed because you're scared of the monster, or you can look through the cabinet, or you can reach around a door and see this pile of messy laundry because your brother left it there. It tells your brain, I have been here before. This is an experience I know. So it is so easy to sink into the narrative that way. And when you are there, and you believe you are there, it's so much easier for the narrative to come to you. Video games at one point were marketed towards boys because of marketing. And so with video games, we have that preconception. And video games today is slowly trying to dismantle it. it when I got into video games 10 years ago, it was more difficult. But nowadays, as more women enter senior positions and there are more organizations focused on promoting marginalized communities, the barrier entry is a lot less significant. There's still work to be done because there's always work to be done. But that change is coming because more people are willing to promote each other. And there are a lot of people, especially in video games, who tell younger generations, I am happy to help you. I will do anything for you. I only ask for one thing that when you are in a position to help somebody else, bring them up with you. Give them the same opportunities, and that is so powerful. Well, the following artist is also visiting us for the second time. The first time was more than a year ago, and now he is releasing a new album called Changes, more than a good reason to invite him again, Clarence Becker, welcome back. Thank you, Marcella, for inviting me. Let's talk about your latest project. It's yes. called Changes. So what changes do you think about? Oh, the changes, changes in my personal life, you know, uh, as I grew from a dance singer into uh, a singer of playing for change and coming become a, my own man now in my Clarence Becker band. And of course, I'm a man of age, now 50 years old. Uh, and I look back on uh, on on a very changeable a life with a lot of changes, mm -hmm. and I wrote a uh, wrote a, an album about that. Mm -hmm. Actually, a big change in your life was you moved when you moved from Holland, which yes. is where you're from, to yes. uh, to Barcelona. To Barcelona, right? big change uh, in in uh, my personal personal life, dealing with drugs, dealing with uh, loss of, uh, of 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 my parents, and dealing with a lot of things. So. Yeah, and I, take, I took a good look in the mirror and I saw that I needed to change some things and I did. Okay. In terms of style, what can you tell us about this new project? Well, this new project, I have tried to actually, uh, just as my, my, the way that I live, uh, try to do a lot of different styles. So there's a lot of danceable things, so you'll, you'll find a little bit of reggae. You find a little bit of rock. You will find a little bit things that sound like a funky, Prince-like. Um, things will make you dance and think and move. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, it has a very good energy, right? So yeah. I guess these changes you're talking about are yes. positive changes. I have positive changes. Everything is positive. Okay. 
Okay, we need to stay positive. That's Absolutely. very important. Absolutely. Okay, um, where can you, we where can we go and see you in Barcelona? Where do you uh, sing? I know you, there is a place where you go weekly. Yes, I play um, in the Jamboree uh, every Thursday night, and okay. it's a, it's a little party. It's a little party. We we try to to give people two hundred percent of pure energy and happiness. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You, you should come and watch us. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to it. It's aimed at people. Uh, what kind of audience do you well, expect? I'm uh, per personally, you know, because I'm, I'm also HIV, I like uh, the, the, the audience to be like a, a little adult, 30, uh, 30 and, and plus. And, you know, the, the audience that still has energy to go out to see concerts and who still wants to be alive. You know? Okay, not teenagers. Well, yeah, teenagers as well, of course. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of teenagers who are coming. All ages. Last, last week we had, a, 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 the audience were like, a, we had a, a class of 12 years old. And they had fun, you know, they had, we can entertain them too. But Okay. Yeah. When, was, uh, when will this album be presented in Barcelona and the rest of uh, Spain? The, I think we uh, we have a, a tour planned around 17th of March. I think 17th okay. of March we are performing in uh, we're, we're releasing the album in, in Barcelona, and that will be also in the Jamboree in the mm -hmm. 17th of March. And around then we're going to uh, to Madrid, to Murcia, I think to Santander and Galicia as well. All right, and you're also going to be on a tour very far away, right? Yes, we're going to Australia um, with uh, Easter. Okay. Um, and we're going to perform there at the Blues Fest, as we have done for the last three years. Um, uh, yeah, we're uh, performing together with a singer called Alice Hall. Okay. And that was, yeah, that was great. Sounds like fun. I'm looking forward to it. And today, what are you going to sing for us? Today, I'm going to sing um, a song called These Ladies. I was inspired through all my trip, you know, I was thinking back of what what inspired me to, uh, singing when I was when I grew up, and it was like I want to come back uh, at the female singers. You know, I listen a lot to female singers. Okay. So I wrote Give us a, some names. I wrote a song. Anita, Anita Franklin, uh, Janis Joplin, uh, 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 Anita Baker, uh, Roberta Flack. Um, yeah, uh, Janet Jackson, Madonna. I, I, you know, and uh, yeah, I wrote a song about to honor them. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the song is called uh, These Ladies. Okay, looking forward to listening to it. Clarence Becker, thank you so much for coming to the Weekly Mag. Thank you Good very much. Good luck with the tour sure. and with everything. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> and while Clarence Becker climbs onto the stage, we still have some time for a language tip. So, do you like cooking? Because Helen and team from International House Barcelona are here to teach you some English words that can prove useful in the kitchen. Check them out. Hi, do you know every English word there is to know when it comes to cooking? So let's review a few actions. So to do this, we're going to play a game. We'll give you some actions to guess. We'll give you the first letter of the word and a clue. See how many of them you get right. Are you ready? OK, so the first verb describes this action that we usually do with a spoon. It means to move a spoon round in order to dissolve, for example, sugar in our tea. Stir it with a spoon. The verb stir is used when we mix something in a liquid this way. But metaphorically, stir also means to cause feelings. So a verb that means reducing food into shreds, we call this tool after this verb. What's this action called? A clue. We do it with cheese. Ooh, like that. The tool is a grater and the verb is to grate. Great. Helen, you're great. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Right, let's see if you can guess an action that we can do with a knife, some food and a cutting board. It's very similar to the verb cut. It also begins with a C. Any ideas? Right, so the verb is to chop. It means to cut food repeatedly into pieces. For example, carrots or onions. By the way, if you ever hear the expression chop chop, it doesn't mean you have to do some cutting. It means quickly, come on, hurry up. Now. Do you know which verb we use when we create dough to make bread, for example? Um, first, we need to... Knead. So, of course, to make bread, first we have to knead the flour and the water into a dough. They say you're a fantastic baker, Helen. Really? Why? 
Oh, all you need is love. <laughs> it's funny. Right, so now this four-letter verb is an action with a whisk, and it means to beat a liquid into a froth. For example, when you're making cream. Like this? Mm-hmm. So, right you are, it is to whip, as in whipped cream. But we are aware that in another context, a whip is a strip of leather for beating animals or people. So the next action is similar to crush, and we can do it with a mortar and pestle or a machine. A hint is it's an irregular verb, and it's something you do with coffee. Right, to grind. If you want to make coffee at home, you buy ground coffee. And unless you want to grind the coffee beans with a grinder. Okay, this action is something you can do with toast, butter, and a knife. And it means to extend. Mm -hmm. And the verb is to spread. You can spread butter on toast, but it's not only used with food. You can also spread any other thing over any area. And another kitchen action with exactly the same amount of letters and with the same initial, it means draining the liquid from some food. For example, pasta. And if you get the verb, you get the tool, which is very similar to a colander. Of course, the solution is to strain, which then you have a strainer. Mm -hmm. And that's it. How many of these verbs did you know? Write them down and you're ready to learn new recipes, which is always very convenient, in English that is. Or you can cook them and invite us for dinner, which is even more convenient. Mm, definitely. Bye. Bye. We don't need no education. Well, it just so happens we do, because that's today's topic for our quiz. Don't miss Guess What? presented by Sergi Cervera. Sometimes all you need to enjoy yourself is just a few hours and a good novel. And if it's in English, even better. So it's time for the book recommendations by our favorite librarian, Salva and Aneida from the Xarxa de Bibliotecas Municipales de la Diputació de Barcelona. Maurice is a typical romance novel. A romance novel is a story in which character A meets character B, character A falls irremediably in love with character B, and then at the end the story may come true after a number of obstacles. The thing is that, the peculiar thing about this book, is that character A is not Romeo, but Maurice, and character B is not Juliet, but Alec, and that the book was, pub was written in 1913-1914. The book by E.M. Foster was not publishable back then. When its author died, people found a note saying this book is publishable, but is it worth? If you think it is worth reading it, do read it and then come back and tell me all about it afterwards. <laughs> Sally Rooney is an author in her late 20s who has already written two novels, Conversations with Friends and Normal People, which I'm recommending today. In this novel, the two main characters, the teenagers Marianne and Connell, find their paths crossing and separating from high school to college days. In high school, Connell is very popular. And when they get to university, Marianne blossoms and their roles change. It also mentions communication uh, for 20-year-old people these days and how their relationships are built. It has been said that it is a 21st century love story. Actually, it was ranked as the 25th best book of this century by the The Guardian's list. And it has been long listed by many, many major literary prizes and it got the Best British Book Award 2019. Whitney used to calm me down Then I turned and rocked me around Anita begged me sweet love Janet put the beats of my heart Queen. 
control My dying materialized my world Mary had me go down Christmas brought Mariah around Shaka made me dance all night Tracy left revolutionized Heartbreak make me love Sunday Welcome back and now let's begin our last bit. It's time for guess what? It's time for fun and brains. Yes, fun and brains. I've got plenty of that, right, uh, Patricia? I'm sure you have. <laughs> well, uh, uh, false, false. <laughs> Sorry. Well, anyway, <laughs> Sorry. it suits today's topic to a T because I've been working all week to prepare a quiz about education. Mm, that's, that's a good topic. Nice. Right? Coming yeah. from an uneducated man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see, first things first, uh, we have three contestants to introduce and we'll begin with today's guest. His name is Abel Susin. Welcome, Abel. Yeah, it's you, man. Thank you. <laughs> really well, glad to be here. let me here. tell you about Abel. He lives near Munseng and we must say he's a kind of a renaissance man. A telecommunications engineer, a dance teacher, a shoe designer as well. Abel, what is your main occupation at Nowadays, the moment? Nowadays I'm focused on treating well the customers, but <laughs> and I don't I, know. <laughs> yes, because they, they give money for, for nice shoes and okay. they deserve that. I and guess. your dream your dream is to be a culinary to do culinary tourism, right? Yes, I like to eat. You good like food. to eat yes. not cook it. <laughs> but I have to say that uh, to make a point here is that I would like to do that always if my body don't have any affection. <laughs> okay, just, just in this if way. If you learn, if you learn how to do it, tell me. Yeah. I will. Ask, I will. Tell us. For true. So he's like Abel in the Seven Dwarfs. No, he makes shoes. <laughs> they make shoes. Up in Monsen. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's yeah, also yeah, welcome yeah. our yeah. two more or less willing contestants, Mark Broderick, Patricia Scalona. Welcome. We're Hello. willing, not happy, but yes, thank you. I'm very willing and happy, always. <laughs> and, okay, good for you. <laughs> and Mark, by the way, Patricia yes. beat you last week. Do you feel comfortable? Uh, Do you feel you know ready what? to... La last week, the neurons in my even? brain were not connecting well. There was something happened. It was like a slowdown in the connection. I think you were interrupting my brain cell. But this week, I'm ready for I will it. do exactly. I'm ready, I'm ready this week, this I'm week. Ready. I promise you. Yeah. We're just being you, like yeah, you're using you. So All right, so about. let the quiz begin. We start with a simple, but not necessarily easy round, the multiple choice challenge. We have asked some... <laughs> No, oh, yes, yeah. right. That's true. We have asked some students stories about their formal education, and here is the result. So let's watch the first video. I've always loved to play video games and all that stuff. I've studied uh, computer engineer and management. My dream was to finish the career and start uh, working like in Google or, or programming some uh, video games. This boy has spent years studying computer engineering, dreaming of a post at Google or designing video games. 
So where does he actually work? Option A, he works in a PC repair shop. <laughs> B, he works in an online poker website. C, he works in a bank. And I have to say that I liked how our, our screenwriter didn't give for any chance, any option that he's actually working as a computer engineering <laughs> in a very successful <laughs> position. It's true. So both of them, I mean, the three of them are, are awful. Perfect. Yes, it's what happens in the real life. That's right, right? Life, how, life sucks sometimes. And <laughs> in which letter or category would you point or put uh, this. Mm -hmm. PC repairman, bank, or? PC repair shop, uh, online poker website, or bank. <laughs> oh, I have um, the answer. The oh, yeah, you got I have the answer. You got the answer. Of course. I have to say, before you go. Go on, you go you first. Know, like, you with go your first. logic and everything. Exactly. Um, go on. You tell us about your I, logic. I know, I, I have a good logic for this one. Go on. Poker. Poker. Because he looks the part. The part. Okay. No, looks okay. Like how about you, Abel? Okay. I would like to say poker as well, but uh, no, because of logic. Yeah, well, yeah, but I will yeah, change. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I will change. Yeah. Uh, poker, it's for making money. People, he, he looked like he didn't look, smart, he didn't look like super wealthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and the thing, yeah, exactly. And the thing is that he tried to find the money, and that's why he. Give me an answer, working. man. Yeah, yeah, sorry. The C, the the bank. Option C, bank, bank, bank option. How about you? Well, Mark? you know what? The first one was definitely the poker, but now I've I've, re I've redirected. Listen, he's wearing a pair of glasses, which means his eyes are sensitive, <laughs> and he's probably been working in a computer repair shop repairing bad screens. There I you go. love your logic. You Let's go. see if this time worked or <laughs> not. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. This is where he works. Finally, I uh, finished working in a bank. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. 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 started very well this week. I mean, this week, like today. I'm going to take this away from I you mean, until you need it, OK? Because Patricia you're, you're cheating. Me mad. No. I would never expect you, Patricia, <laughs> cheating like until this. Until he needs sure. it. Huh? So he stops using Give it. Give the tool back to him. I am the quiz master, and I dare you. Thank you. you OK, so what did you want to be when you uh, grew up as a kid? Come on, Abel. Surely living in the mountains with seven dwarves was one of your dreams. Exactly. I, I would like to be a boss. That's fine. And that's what you are now, because you are ahead with one point. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and that's the score. Current score is 0-0-1. Zero, zero, you are the boss now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's uh, talk about the importance of communication. My English is not really, really good, but uh, I study by myself. I have to study English because we need uh, communication. Guys, I'm glad that at least one of our witnesses stresses the importance of English, but what does this Chinese boy need English for? I'm gonna give you three options again. So A, to sing the latest pop music hits. B, to play video games with his friends. And C, to talk to his Japanese girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting, right? Yes. Patricia? I believe in love, not so much, but yeah, well... You that's believe it. in love and you said that said in front that. of the camera? I so please let's love. keep this, this clip because I want it for my personal records. Do you, okay. do you actually register irony or no? I do don't. Okay. I certainly so do. So no, not. he needs English to speak. To, All right. To so you are going girlfriend. after love? No. It's, uh, yeah, so I'm going for option that. C, Abel. For me, it's clearly he has a uh, flesh of a singer and he wants to sing songs in English. All right. That's why. Okay. So A. How about you, Mark? I'm going to take a stereotype that Asians play a lot of video games. And it's oh. true. Hikikimori, they all stay in their side of things and play lots of video games. For sure, right. he needed English to talk to we his wife. We also have Mark, glasses. Clash Mark of Clans exactly. and all these things. Glasses. Exactly. Glasses. Let's see yeah. if it a works. Exactly. Uh, because this is the correct option. I like play the video games with uh, international friends. Exactly. Stereotypes sometimes work, right? Yes. I mean, a game of Fortnite at 4 a.m. in the morning with some <laughs> players on another continent. I think we all can relate to that. But how is that a well, I don't think so. Isn't you don't like think so, right? Do that all <laughs> the time? Fortnite. I, I work okay, with children. Okay, but anyway, let's Fortnite. ask them if they've ever been hooked on a video game. Okay. You know, Tetris, uh, Candy Crush, uh, or Snake. other games, like more sophisticated, more modern games. Wow, the first game I ever got addicted to was one called Championship Manager, which was a football manager game back in the early late 90s. And we used to spend wow. 12 and 13 hours in my friend's house playing this game, like bringing teams Watching, like, through like two on the PC. Yeah, 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 it was really slow and it would go on for hours. But yeah, that was the first game I was really addicted to. I had a problem. 
Oh, uh, I have the, the situation that my mother just, uh, well, the Magic Kings brought me a, a video game play that was called Carmageddon. And I was eight years old. Three wise and men brought you Carmageddon. Yeah, Carmageddon. I don't know if you know, but it's a play. It's a game that it's focused on uh, destruction, a race, <laughs> a race. Yes, a race, yeah. but with destruction, of uh, with cars. No. And she was told that uh, by the by the woman of the of the store that it was cars for just racing, but it's Carmageddon. What is that about? Carmageddon. Cars and destruction. Well, it's killing people with the car. Sorry. Oh. oh All right. How nice. about you, Patricia? 100 points um, for Granny. Super Mario Bros. The first version. That's how old I am. Not bad. Classics are always good. Okay. Let me let me stress this situation because Mark is ahead with one point, but he's even with Abel with one point, and the best part of it is Patricia is with zero points. So I'm, so I'm, actually, I'm, actually, I'm actually not ahead. I'm at the same one then. But I needed to. Put mathematics some, is some not your. Excitement. It's not some your thing, is it? Mathematics. Okay. Come on. Anyway, let's. <laughs> Finish with our third <laughs> educational story about these two journalism <laughs> students. There's a story about me and my friends. We made Twitter accounts, an uh, alter ego Twitter accounts, for make jokes about uh, our, our teachers. It finished it. Of course, what good is Twitter accounts if you can mess with the public image of your teachers, right? So, what do you think happened next? And here are the options. Option A, they got the attention of people and were hired as community managers, okay? Option B, they got expelled from school. And option C, they still use the old accounts to remember the good old days. They got spelled. <laughs> and if they didn't, they should have been. <laughs> okay, here's the authority talking. Oh, okay. no, 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 you shouldn't mess with your teachers. It's Thank hard you. enough to be a teacher. I, I, I agree Thank with you. that. Thank you. That's I good agree. for backing me up there. I've been a student and I understand the situation of them, and I think that they still keep the account for making love uh, about. For the, making no, love. Not love. To laughing. Love, uh, laughing laugh, about. Laugh, laugh, yeah, laugh, sorry, laugh. sorry. About the teachers, no? And, and so is the C. They could Maybe make love with their teachers too. <laughs> I don't know, man. The test. We're, 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 we're going to be dangerous. There's a line so there. Let's move forward. <laughs> we're moving into dangerous territory here. Um, I'm going to go with those guys were super smart, very intelligent, excellent online. They knew how to work Twitter, Instagram, and they became community managers. <laughs> Why not? Okay. Just to be different. All right, I like it. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's see. Me and my friends were kicked out from school, and that's my story. Oh, one week from school, yes. Not authority, but justice. Justice, <laughs> all right, I agree. And as a justice um, situation, you got even with your partners right now. Welcome. It's a it poetical happens. justice, we yeah, could yeah. say. <laughs> Patricia won, Abel won, and Mark won. How exciting, Marcella, right? <laughs> Yeah, Three very ones. exciting. Nail and, uh, stuff. Let's see more excitement. Have you guys ever got in trouble with oh. a teacher when you were in school? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Why we asked? <laughs> and the answer was I, like. Uh, yeah, I got unanimous. like back in Ireland. Like uh, we still had like pseudo forms of corporal punishment, and I remember being <laughs> dragged what? out of the. Yeah, yeah. When I was nine, being dragged out of the classroom by my ear. Like the teacher just grabbing wow. my ear because I was talking and grabbing me and pulling me along by the can ear. We, can we do that? Can we do that nowadays with you, Mark? <laughs> we can Would reenact it, be it. Marcella can pull me off stage by my ear out yes, of the Yes, I want to see that. that. Pretty cool. You would deserve it. So, yeah, that was one thing that really like impacted <laughs> me. But then, you know. <laughs> it's good. That was Ireland. That was Ireland back in the day. Ah, Ireland in the good times. <laughs> if that's what you like to call it. All right. <laughs> so. Now it's when the true competition begins. Abel, you're against two beasts with nothing to lose. They certainly know they've got nothing to win either. <laughs> <laughs> and we already lost our dignity, exactly. so whatever. <laughs> A long time ago. So time for the speed challenge. <clears throat> Okay, that means that every right answer can get you two points. Mm -hmm. You have to play the devices in front of you to oh, answer nice. first, and if you get it wrong, you get the other players a chance. Exactly, that's the attitude. I like the excitement Maybe. Abel is bringing today here. Well, no. So, the best teacher of all is the University of Life. <laughs> like it, right? <laughs> and where can we find all its lessons? In the popular wisdom, of course. So today we're after Proverbs. That's it. Oh, we gosh. give you the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> we give you the beginning of a very popular sayings and you just have to finish them. So, 
Three, two, one, here we go. You can lead a horse to water, Mar, but... Mar, 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 Mar. but you cannot make him drink. That is yes. correct. Two points to Mar. You're going to oh, kill this one, I think. So this here guy. we go. Guys, curiosity killed Mar. The cat. The cat, that is correct. Sorry. Never put off till tomorrow. Mar, what you can do today. That's correct. Wow, okay, Mar. Mar. <laughs> Mar. I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. But I'm nice sorry. try, Abel. Here we go. Ready, ready, guys? Two heads, <laughs> Patricia. What's with you, Abel? Two heads. You know that you have to answer, right? I will. Abel? Things better than one. Well, I'm going to give you that as the oh, correct one. It's far better than one. Abel, no, 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 no. I'll give you that. Don't do that. Oh, thank you. You can't teach an old dog. Oh, Mark. New tricks. New tricks. That's, correct. That's correct. Here we go. It's better to be saved. Patricia. And sorry. That is correct. Yeah. Don't look a gift horse. Mark. In the mouth. In the That's mouth. True. Correct. Don't judge a bull. Patricia. Oh. 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 It's a bad book. Yours. Well done. That's yours. OK. Haste makes. Mark. Oh, I didn't. Sorry. Haste makes the. Three, two, no, one. I don't know this one. Haste makes the, the paste. That is not correct. <laughs> Patricia. Mistake. Three, two, one. Waste. 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 makes waste. Uh. Here we go. A stitching time. Abel. Mm, really good. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> really good is not correct, Mark. Saves nine. Saves That's nine. True. Correct. A word to the wise. Patricia? No idea. No, you got a word <laughs> to the wise. Uh, I don't I, 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 Wow. Sure. I don't know. Yes. Wise guys. I don't know. No. What? No. Okay, I can't remember this one. A word to the a word wise. To the wise. Uh, a word to the wise is sufficient. That was not correct. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, next one. The apple remember. doesn't fall for. Patricia? The tree. That is correct. Well done. <laughs> Very exciting because so far the score looks like this. Mark is leading with 13 points. My lucky number. Might be kind of a revenge for what happened last week. Yeah, we don't exactly. know because Patricia is way behind with seven points. And in the last position, there is a bell. Worse of it with three well-deserved <laughs> points. Oh, but yeah, I I'm love, so love, like... love his enthusiasm. <laughs> and I've got the last saying for you guys. It ain't over until the fat lady sings. <laughs> so we still have one last round. I didn't say it was written by our screenwriter. I, I just say it out loud. Okay. Don't look at me like that, Patricia. Uh, yeah, but why don't we chill out first with some stand-up comedy? Let's have a look at the giggles today with the last week's guest on Guess What? The comedian Hannah Becker. <laughs> Being a woman can be hard, but I do think that women get a more complete bathroom experience than men do. Uh, like, we spend so much time there anyway. Like, I just imagine men in the bathroom, you know, they're lined up like pigs at a trow just snarfing down their slop. When do they get to look at their phones? I mean, I stay hydrated. I drink five liters of water a day just so that I can scroll on Instagram while I'm sitting on the toilet. You know, speaking of bathrooms, have you ever been to a public restroom and there's no toilet paper there. Doesn't that feel like a misogynist attack from the, from the management of the bar saying like, we don't want women here? I feel attacked. And I think that the most feminist thing that any woman can do is tell another woman that there's no toilet paper in the bathroom before she goes in. Oh, it's the best feeling. And honestly, an even better thing is if you carry tissues around in your purse with you and you give it to another woman, it's like you're a freaking superhero. Like, I am no longer Hannah Becker, comedian and mediocre person. I am the toilet paper vigilante. No more shall women return to the bar with pea-soaked panties. Never again. And she's right. No, no, that's no, you kind don't. of disturbing you to imagine allowed. the amount of women with pea-soaked <laughs> panties walking okay, around. Okay, that was uh, <laughs> Hannah Becker's unmistakable style. Check her out on our stand-up comedy section with the rest of the giggles on our website. Yes, we love Hannah. And now for the last and third round, the true or false challenge. Three points every right answer. Very easy peasy. Marcel is going to read <laughs> statements which you will have to decide if they are true or they are false. No cheating, all right? Not talking Whenever to anyone ever. in particular. And that includes copying from your mates, okay? When I ring this bell... It's mine. I'm going to do it again just to make sure... No, 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 no. no cheating. Good. We said that. I'm going to do it again just because I, I enjoy it. 
When I do that, you will have to show the true or false sign at the same time. Okay, mm -hmm. so listen okay. carefully. I'm gonna ring, Perfect. you show it, and I'm gonna say who's right and who's wrong. Oh. Ready? Okay. Okay. So, the largest school in the world has more than 50,000 students. True or false? Wait. Wait, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. The rules uh, were I, this is easy. a new game for me, okay? Uh, it almost takes me a few games to get into it. Three, right? I'm two, sorry. one, You're no. Fast. True, true, and true. And the right answer is correct. It's true. Points for you all. True. The largest school in terms of pupils is the City Montessori School in Lucknow, India, who currently has over 56,000 uh, 56, uh, pupils. Wow. So well done. Well I done. knew it, I knew it. Next. Okay, the oldest teacher in the world was a Greek woman called Theodora Mitsotakis, who taught until she was 102 years old. Three, two, one, get your answers. Here we go, <laughs> false, true, and uh, true, which means point to Mark, three points for you. That's <laughs> false. Teachers, teachers love their profession, but yes. for God's sake, yes. I mean, do, do you think somebody would deal with kids for a century? No. Oh, yeah. I'm, a te I'm a teacher and I'm <laughs> and already looking towards <laughs> retirement and I'm 36. There you go. So, yeah, Next no. one. Okay, the oldest school in the world, the King's School in Oxford, dates back to the... 12th century. True or ready, false? ready, three, two, one. Here we go. Now, true, true. That doesn't count. No, no, so no. That's true. That's true. True, true, and false. That is Mark got the three points yes. again. Yeah. Actually, the King's School is in Canterbury and its origins date ah, back really? to. 597, 597 AD, or yeah. so they claim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really well really done. Hard, yeah. So, are wow, you going Mark? to say that it was Trinity College? Wow, no, 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 I knew it wasn't that one. I knew it was older than that. Yeah, Mark is not recognizable sure. today. Okay, it's right. It's education. It's my, it's my, <laughs> it's my your field. field. It's my field. Okay, here we go. Next. Yeah. In Finland, in Finland, children are not forced to go to school until the age of seven. True or false? Three, two, two I'm nervous. one. I never. Okay. No. True, true, and true, which is. Uh, correct point for you all. True, wow. in Finland schools isn't compulsory until the children are seven. So and they don't well, have homework till they're like 14 or something as well, I think. They're not what a great country to, 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 to yeah. leave. <laughs> also, they have like when 15 pupils. Huh? Also, they have like 15 pupils in a room. And so high yeah. ratings of uh, suicide. The highest ones. Did I say that a lot? No. No? Not no, in Finland? No. no. Okay, so. Uh, you need I'm to get educated. You need to right get now. educated. <laughs> The highest school in the world in Tibet is more than 5,000 meters above sea level. True or false? Three, two, one. Now, false, false, and false. Mwak, 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 mwak. Oh. It's true. Puma Chantang in Tibet is said to be the world's highest town, and so is its primary school. It's 5,373 meters above sea level. That is 200 meters higher than the base camp of the Everest. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's only one question left. Uh, five points for whoever gets it right. It's a very exciting, isn't it? But if you get it wrong, we will take five points <laughs> again, uh, uh, away from you. And also, five points again. Again, 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 away from again. you. And also, you will die. No, just kidding. <laughs> so the final Jesus score Sergi. can still change. And this is the current situation. You won't die. You will lose five points. And right now, things look like that. So let's see how the score is looking right now. Mark is ahead with unbelievable but true 25 points. Patricia is way, way behind, but keeping her uh, Dignity? style. No, not that much, but <laughs> style with 13 points. Annabelle is with, uh, right now, well. is currently with nine well-deserved points. Not only, not only, I'm not, I'm not, that I'm bad. not feeling comfortable yeah, but, with nine, it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here we go, last one. Beast. Well, you never know what, ca what happens next, right? Correct. I mean, things can change. Exactly, absolutely. So the question uh, is, pay attention. So it says like that, teachers in the Inca Empire were paid with uh, coffee beans. True or false? Three, two, exciting, right? One, show your <laughs> statements. False, true, and true, which means Patricia just got five points. Oh, you guys just four. lost. 
five points, so things are going to change All a little right. bit. Of Good course, job. I must Good confess job. that I have no idea about any schools in the Inca Empire, but coffee plant didn't reach America until the 18th century. Come on, guys. Mm -hmm. What you have been saying for the whole quiz today to yeah, me I that I should get <laughs> education. Hmm? Shame on you, Mark. Ooh. Well, for things that, that you learn at school uh, in the history <laughs> class, I suppose. You never stop uh, learning. But exactly. But okay, things, so the score looks Things good, changed right? a lot, but not enough for our beloved Patricia because Mark still won with 20 points. Congratulations! <laughs> but Patricia just got there with 18 <laughs> points. It was really close. I think you missed, I think you missed points. <laughs> I think we need to count. Well, anyway, again. Mark. So mean. Mark, well done, no? Yeah, absolutely. We this is uh, congratulations for Mark and for Abel as well. Thank we, you. We're we we sorry for Abel. Well, four points. Well done. Did you have? Did you have fun, Abel? Come yeah. Instead of congratulations, I, like I, I would stay here for a week at least until the, the next That's week. Good. Yeah, you you well, in that case, own, uh, we yeah, should say. Own, um, own, That's correct. Best things in life are free, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, we've learned. Uh, except some cuts. <laughs> anyway, Abel, thank you for coming and playing with us. Until uh, next time, thank you, Mark and Patricia. Thank and uh, Sergi, I'll see you next week. Thanks for having me. Mm. All right. And so uh, we are at the end of the show. We hope that you had a good time. And if you missed any of it, you know, you catch up with all the episodes and sections on our website. We'll be back next week with more. And in the meantime, you know, you can follow us on social media where you can post the solution to the guest word, which is you bear them to see better and you raise them to say cheers. That's uh, seven letters. Until then, stay tuned, keep up your English and have a great week. Bye-bye.